Okay, there are a couple of things that you're going to need to do to prepare the skull to mount on the uh, base plate. <coughs> this skull I've already done some work with. Um, already drilled it out. You can see how big that hole is. I also have a, uh, an eye kit that I use that I'll show you guys later. So I do drill out the eyes quite a bit. I use a Dremel tool for that. I use a uh, drill press to do the hole in the bottom, but you can do that with a regular drill. I uh, have not yet uh, drilled out the opening for the jaw servo. <coughs> I'll do that once we get a little bit closer to assembly so that I can eyeball where it needs to be. It doesn't always end up where exactly where they suggest that you should put it. Uh, you do need to drill into the jaw. The method that they recommend at Triaxle is to use a 1 16th inch uh, drill bit, drill a hole clean through, and then to tap out the hole with a 256 tap. There's another method that I used on one of my skulls. Uh, instead of that, if you don't want to do the tap thing, uh, this is a little bit easier. Probably end result is about the same. It's a 1 16th threaded ball link. <clears throat> what you do is you drill your 16th inch hole through the through the jaw, and then you countersink a little bit on the back side. I'll fill this in with some putty and then stain over it. And you won't be able to see it. The thing I like about this is that it's a very positive connection. This is never going to pull out. Uh, the first one of these that I did, unfortunately, I didn't test the servo, uh, the servo connections before I set it up in my test rig. So I had the skull attached, and as soon as I turned on the servos, the uh, limits were wrong, and it pulled the ball link right out of the jaw. So you want to be very careful. Whichever one of these you do, you want to be very careful. When you initially test your jaw linkage, you do not want to hook this up. You want to uh, kind of put it in place and make sure that it's going to work before you physically connect it. Otherwise, there's a risk that you pull this ball link right out of the jaw. So we're just going to drill this real quick. Uh, they give you a pretty good rough estimation in the documents. They also show you, uh, tell you to put a sharpie mark on it. Sharpie marks are okay, I guess, but not entirely necessary. The problem with this one is that you've got to come at it from a different direction with your tap. But it does tap out fairly well. I'm doing this from the outside. The ball link's going to go on the inside. start on the outside, that way any threads that you've got, they're screwed up because you started loose. Uh, by the time you get it all the way through, they should be nice and clean and straight. Pretty easy. Ball links pop off. They use a little bit of force. Um, they pop off pretty easily. They're designed to pop off easily, but you don't want to do it too many times because we'll loosen it up. All right, that was it. That was pretty easy, huh? <laughs> All right. Now, one thing, uh, you probably want to drop a little dab of glue in or on this so that it doesn't eventually back out. Um, if you're going to stain like I've done with this, and I'll show you guys how to do this stain later if I have a chance. Um, stain actually gets all in around that. It also tends to act as Loctite to keep the ball joint in place. But that was pretty easy. Um, similar thing with the 
just using a threaded ball link with a nut on the back. You just drill the hole. This is a little bit smaller, the, the diameter of this, uh, the thread on this ball link is a little bit smaller, so it just goes right through. Either one, whichever you want to do, uh, the tap process works fairly well if you're comfortable with that. Okay, next step is probably to double check the jaw and to put a uh, build a, put an opening in for the jaw linkage. Uh, I just left that uh, servo net connection on the end of this. It actually makes it a little easier to manage the wires. Uh, drop this into place. Now, when you're done with this, this plate actually sits a little bit above the edge of the top of this skull. Again, this is a Lindbergh skull. These are the only skulls I would recommend that you use. The Bucky skulls are just too heavy, kind of a pain to work with. I've uh, used them before. Lindberghs are cheap, they're easy, they're, uh, they're plastic, they're model airplane plastic, so they're easy to cut up. And uh, they work pretty well. So I'm just eyeballing the where the link is going to go, and I'm going to put a, an opening in the skull, putting a mark there, and I'm actually going to do this from the inside with a Dremel tool. When you throw a light underneath, when you throw a light through the skull, you can actually see where the marks are. I can even see this, this mark I just put, it's right here. So I'm just going to drill this section out with my Dremel tool. Um, they recommend that you just drill a hole with a 1 8 inch bit. Um, so far I haven't been so lucky with uh, getting that hole in exactly the right place, so I do tend to take out a little bit of material. Nice thing about that is nobody ever notices when there's a hole here. It is next to impossible to notice that you've got any kinds of openings in the sides of the skull. It doesn't detract from the function or look of the skull at all. And I'm going to go uh, take care of that and then we'll put this thing together. Okay, next step is to attach the base plate to the skull. First thing you want to do is attach the brackets to the base plate. The holes in the base plate are threaded. So you want to screw the screws in most of the way, then attach the bracket, screw them in the rest of the way. You may have to take a pair of pliers and twist the bracket a quarter of a twist or a half a twist so that it's uh, flush with the edge of the, or parallel to the edge of the base plate. You also want to take a look at the brackets themselves. Some of these brackets are larger than others. They stick out farther than others. You want to uh, minimize the distance between the edge of the base plate and the face of the bracket. So you might have to twist them around a little, you know, swap them around a little bit or even maybe uh, swap a bracket for one of the brackets that are already on the servos. The other thing I did was attach the jaw linkage. I don't know where I'm going to need to cut this yet, but it's generally going to be somewhere a little more than half of the uh, length that you get and we're going to figure all that out once we get it into the skull. Now the fitting of the base plate into the skull is always a little bit more frustrating than you expect it to be. Uh, you end up having to fiddle with it a lot. Probably take you about five minutes to do. Don't get frustrated. It will eventually all fit together. Uh, you see I got the jaw linkage through the hole there. You want the base plate to sit right about at the edge of the top of the skull. And once you get that done, you want to take a marker. I use a silver marker or a lighter colored marker instead of a black marker, just in case I get something on the skull. Once I stain the skull later, those marks won't show, but a black mark will. So I've uh, gone ahead now, I'm just double checking to make sure that my hole locations for the brackets are still correct 
than they appear to be. For the servo linkage, I want to push the, make sure that the servo is up all the way in its up position. And I want to allow for the ball socket. I'm going to put a little mark on the on the link right about where I want to cut it. Let's see, that's probably still going to be might still be a little bit long, but we can trim it more later on as we're going. There's a lot of throw in the jaw in the jaw servo, so don't be afraid to cut this a little teeny tiny bit on the short side. Just remember though, don't connect the linkage until you're actually sure that the servo is not going to travel up and break the ball joint off of the uh, jaw. All right. So now I'm going to go drill these holes and I'm going to countersink them with a countersink so that the screws are recessed. Okay, I've drilled and countersunk the skull. Um, Probably should have put these in a little bit lower, maybe an eighth of an inch lower, but it's not critical. I've also cut the servo linkage to give it a first pass to see how that uh, how that works. Make sure that the linkage goes through the hole that you've opened up for the jaw. Drop this into place. I would just line up one hole first and get a screw into there. Now uh, remember earlier I had mentioned, I suggested that you use two of the long screws somewhere else and this is the reason why. Um, depending on what linkage you're using for the jaw, it's possible that that long screw will interfere with the jaw linkage and the shorter screw just seems to work. So I'm using the short screw here. I'm not going to screw these in all the way yet. Come around to the other side. Line up the hole. The rest of them you can use whichever screw, the longer screw or the shorter one. screw these in all the way just yet. Might need to tinker with the holes a little bit to line them up. Okay, and this last one back here, looks okay too. There we go, all screwed in. Not tight, just screwed in. And then we can check the linkage for the jaw. Um, again, I'm not going to attach the linkage yet because I don't want it to pull out if the servo heads off in the wrong direction. Looks pretty close though. Not sure if you can see that. Looks pretty good. I might have to trim or just screw the linkage in three or four turns to get it to come to close. So now what I'm going to do is uh, test the mechanism. I'm going to start with the jaw and I'm going to leave it off of the jig so that we can get that working properly. <laughs> 